The internet has created a digital world with a seemingly infinite amount of information available for anyone who could connect to the World Wide Web. However, the internet has also created a world where pornography of all forms is never more than a few keystrokes away. This new age of porn differs greatly from that which was experienced by our relatives in the past, as there is a plethora of internet porn with varying categories available to anyone at any time at no cost at all. For most people, the long-term effects of viewing pornography are relatively minor. However, an extreme case of the negative effects of pornography can be found in the case of a man named Ted Bundy. Ted Bundy was just a young boy growing up in the 1950s. He is said to have done exceptionally well in school, but not with his classmates as his social skills were lacking. Bundy claims to have discovered pornography when he was around the age of 12, and his addiction continued to grow well into his teenage years. The young Bundy began to feel the need to look at more and more explicit and violent pornography to satisfy his needs, and eventually he felt the need to go to the next level to find satisfaction. Over his criminal career, serial killer and rapist Ted Bundy admits to have having killed just over 30 women. However, experts believe that he may have killed closer to 100, all following the same grotesque pattern of rape followed by a brutal beating until the victim is rendered dead. It is important to note that Bundy did not come from a typical 1950s household, as he was an illegitimate child that showed an early interest in knives and the art style of macabre, which is an allegorical representation of the ever-present figure of death. Nonetheless, Bundy is quoted as saying, I've met a lot of men who were motivated to commit violence just like me, and without exception, without question, every one of them was deeply involved in pornography. As stated before, Bundy tended to be antisocial, and his addiction to pornography likely only furthered his social disconnect. One must also keep in mind that the case of Ten Bundy is widely known. However, it has not been a case nearly as brutal as that of Ten Bundy's since the killer himself was still in action. Bundy is an example of how pornography can influence a person. However, it is important to note that Ted is also from an age where pornography was most widely available in printed form. The effects of porn in the digital age differ greatly. In the modern age, a person does not need to settle on one type of porn as they would have had in the past with magazines and images that typically offered one or two styles of pornography in an issue. On any given day, a person can view an excessive amount of internet pornography that differs greatly in theme and subject matter. This also allows people to explore a vast array of pornography that they may have never learned about 20 or 30 years ago. Not because it was unavailable, but because the anonymity of the internet can allow someone to explore in ways that they would not consider doing in person. On the internet, nobody knows you're a dog. In addition to this, because almost everyone in our first world country has access to the interwebs, it is not uncommon for a person in a lower economic class to find themselves tempted to upload explicit content of themselves to porn sites in an attempt to make some money. In the days of old, pornography would have been highly regulated to ensure all models are over the legal age. The modern age of internet porn, however, has made the transportation of child pornography much easier than ever. In some cases, one may not even be aware of the fact that they are viewing child porn, as websites can claim that people in the video are at least 18 years of age without providing any legal documentation. For the most part, the region of the internet known as the surface web is a generally accepted place to find legal porn. However, the deep web is a completely different story. The deep web essentially allows people to fly under the radar of the government by allowing people to connect to individual, private servers rather than one the government has regular access to. This allows for a plethora of crime, such as the buying of drugs and hiring of hitmen, to take place. But more commonly, it allows people to produce and sell child porn without the knowledge of law officials. Child porn is one example of illegal porn that the internet allows for. However, there is pornography on the surface web that, talk, that walks the line of legality as well. The internet has allowed for the creation of revenge porn, a form of pornography in which explicit photos or videos of an ex-partner are posted online without their permission. The same concept of porn being posted without the permission of those involved can also be found in a fairly recent case in which a hacker named Edward Majersik 
accessed the iCloud accounts of a large number of celebrities and leaked their private photos. He has recently received 18 months in federal prison. There is no denying that the internet has forever changed the way society operates, and for the most part, this is a good thing. The internet allows for the near instant communication, access to what is essentially the database of all published human knowledge, and has revolutionized the way students learn. Ralph Waldo Emerson is quoted as writing in his essay Self-Reliance that society never advances. It recedes as fast on one side as it gains on the other. The internet has provided to us a large leap in technology, however it has caused a huge setback in how we treat others with dignity.